Lord, what a wonderful place that we can stand in your presence. What an amazing thing, what a wonderful thing it is to be redeemed, to be called the people of God, to have bold access into your presence, to your very throne. Father, we worship you this morning. We worship you, Son of God. We worship you, our Saviour. devotion that we can stand O oh Lord in this holy place that we can worship you and in spirit behold your face that we can be transformed by your word and your spirit and behold the day of your power
Praise the Lord. What will it be like when we see him face to face? Praise the Lord. So, I was watching the Chosen series a while ago, and Jesus goes and heals different people with his disciples present. He even goes into some of the synagogues and heals them. But how much more power from that time to now have we got with the Holy Spirit inside of us to do the same miracles proclaim year of liberty just doing and moving speaking, healing to people how much more power have we got with the Holy Spirit inside us than they did back then. We've got so much more power and ability if we... How do I say this? If we lean on the Holy Spirit and... When we pray, we're expecting the Holy Spirit to move on our behalf. That's where change comes in. So what I'm saying is I encourage you to move and allow the Holy Spirit to overtake you and complete what God has proclaimed for us to do. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Mm. Well, are we believers in this house? Yes. Do we believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever? Yes. Do we believe he sent his Holy Spirit to be poured out into our hearts? Praise the Lord. Well, you may be seated. How's everybody doing this morning? <laughs> Fantastic. It's a good start. <laughs> been a week of good testimonies <laughs> yes Amen. is God on the throne still yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so some good things must have been happening surely praise the Lord <clears throat> I'm going to uh, the title of this uh, message this morning is our great creator the Lord. Our great creator, and we were singing about it this morning, <clears throat> about some of his creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. I've been born again. Hallelujah. 
our God, the great creator. And I believe that uh, just some simple, basic truths uh, God wants to make alive this morning in a fresh way. The Bible begins this way. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you know that it's been discovered by scientists that the universe is expanding still? When God spoke into existence, of course, not every scientist will acknowledge this, but there are a lot of Christian scientists who will acknowledge this, who do acknowledge this, that it was God who spoke creation into existence, that it is creation, it's not, it's not just an accident, a cosmic accident. But then when God spoke and created the heavens and the earth, that that creation didn't stop there. It is still continuing. God, our creator, is his creativity continues. It goes on and on. God is eternal. He's not a one-time event. Genesis 1 and chapter 26 and 27, very familiar verses. Then God said, let us make man in our image. So we are created. Man, human beings were created in the first place. Let us make man in our, our, our image, our image. So that's the Godhead speaking there, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that, it, that creeps upon the earth. <clears throat> including snakes that appear in trees. So, <laughs> so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. <clears throat> then God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So God created, God created the universe, God created the earth, God created, in fact, the Bible says he created the earth first. And then it didn't have to start out there, it started here. And then it went out. This is the center of God's creation. Yeah, praise the Lord. It says so when you read through there, um, Verse 14 of, uh, of Genesis chapter 1, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the, let them be for lights in the firmament for the heavens to give light on the earth, and it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. People are sending things out into space to try and see where it all started. Yeah. They're heading in the wrong direction. <laughs> this, this here, the one who did it, tells us they weren't. Who, these, these guys who are looking for the answers, they weren't there. No, no man was there in the beginning. The one who was there has told us. Amen. He gave us a book to tell us. Okay, praise the Lord. God doesn't think like man thinks. And it's important for us to grasp that. Otherwise, we bring God down to our level. We can't do that. God will blow, he'll blow our minds. <laughs> totally. He's on a totally higher level. We're going to actually just, I'm going to quote something a bit later on that uh, demonstrates that. Uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come, before you, your body starts falling apart and st <laughs> your stuff happens. We know what happens. Praise the Lord. 
Make the most of the time you've got now. Appreciate your creator. Don't waste your life. We mustn't waste our lives. We've got an awesome creator. Our God is the great creator, and we are created in his image. Creativity comes from God. That's why human beings are creative. It's one evidence that there is a God. Where did, the, where did creativity come from? There's creativity all around us. Things that we, can, we look out there and we see the stuff in, the, um, in nature that God has created. But I'm looking out at the car park there too. I can see cars that people have created. Where did that creativity come from? It came from God, the ability to create. Every, this, this room is full of stuff that, uh, to do with creativity. Somebody created it. The, the, the whole, and the, the materials to make it out of were, were created by God in the first place. The brain... The imagination was created by God. Creativity is part of life. Creativity is very important. I believe that we must grasp this, that it's very important for us to, to see how precious creativity is. And behind it all, we have a great creator. Creativity is necessary to overcome obstacles and roadblocks in life. When you face something that looks daunting, and it might be a health challenge, it may be a, um, just a financial challenge, uh, just needing to know how to do something, creativity is vital to overcome that challenge. But we've got to always remember that God is the source of creativity. And if we separate ourselves from him, we make a great mistake. There have been songs written about this. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Isaiah 43, I'll just turn to there. I better... Go to Psalms and go right. I went to the Psalms and turned left. Isaiah 43 and verse 16. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Our God will make a way. He will make a way. He's always made a way for his people. When we think we've come to an end and there's no way, that's when God has an opportunity. That's when God gets the glory. That's where God says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. When we feel weak, we, when we feel we can't do it, we're in a strong place if we look, to the right, look in the right direction. Our God will make a way. And when he does, he gets the glory. Praise the Lord. Are we doing all right? And I'm sure that uh, you could think of many examples of, cre of how God has created and um, things he's created on this uh, through the Bible. God, as I already said, God has created life on this planet in the first place. And that, that creation has not stopped. It's an ongoing thing because God is alive. God is moving. Um, God is not static. So he created life on this planet, a suitable habitat for us. When evil came in, when that snake I referred to before, well, Satan came in in the form of a serpent. Took, Satan always likes to come in um, if he can't possess and uh, 
and take and usurp and take over what's not rightfully his. That uh, and he manifested himself before uh, Eve and in the garden and deceived Adam and Eve. Um, evil took over, but God worked through Noah eventually as, as evil began to take over and uh, on the earth. God worked through Noah to create a way for mankind to continue on this planet. God created a pathway for his Redeemer to come. God created a nation of people for himself from two people who couldn't have children, Abraham and Sarah. God created a path of escape from slavery in Egypt for his chosen people when they'd been there in bondage for over 400 years. Well, sorry, it turned into bondage eventually. Uh, They went there to uh, have refuge from the famine uh, originally, but then they became slaves. And as the time came for them to be delivered from that slavery, from bondage, God made a way. When they stood at the Red Sea and it looked impossible with Pharaoh's army bearing down on them, God created a pathway through the waters. Just read about that in Isaiah. God created supernatural provision for his people to sustain them as they went on their journey through the wilderness. Manna from heaven brought in the, brought in the quail for them to eat. He... Um, he, he brought, he, he created water, uh, uh, the water for them to drink, brought it out of a rock, amazingly. In fact, this doesn't it blow your mind when you think about, it? in one place it talks about how the rock followed them. <laughs> how do you figure that one out? <clears throat> God created ways for the the Israelites, to win formidable battles. I mean, we all know this stuff, don't we? God creating, creating, creating. Then when Jesus appears, Jesus demonstrated that he also is the great creator. He demonstrated himself to be God. Jesus created wine out of water. Jesus created Food to feed, multiply, uh, to, to feed multitudes from somebody's lunchbox. A few bread, uh, some bread and some fish. Jesus created new life from death. He raised up a widow's son who had died. Upset a funeral procession. <laughs> In a good way. Raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. You think about that. Four days in the grave. Rotting flesh. Recreated to to wholeness and newness. Not only that. Is it the bell? For whom does the bell toll? (laughs) Praise the Lord. Well, we've got resurrection power here, haven't we? Praise the Lord. (laughs) And not only that, God raised himself from the dead when he took our place upon the cross. Stood in, proclaimed forgiveness for humanity and died in our place. Paid a price that we were unable to pay, really to redeem us and give us new life, that we could become new creations in Christ. As we sang about this morning, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Ephesians 2 verse 10, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Do you know, we sing that song this morning, I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. You know, I I believe we can make a mistake with that song even. We get excited about it. But we can think about it in terms of back, for us believers, 
when we made that decision and we said yes to Jesus and we became born again and it was that exciting time that everything became new. Suddenly we became alive in God and we felt like we could take on anything and overcome it. But we had some learning to do too, but because we can, we can take on anything and overcome it, but we've got to know who we are in Christ. So we've got to be renewed in, in our, have our minds renewed to new creation realities. But, but you know, that was not just a one-time event that we look back on. I'm a new creation. Creation is continuing in me. I'm continually being recreated because I belong to an eternal God. Amen. If you're a believer, that creation work is continuing in your life. God has not finished. He will finish the work one day. Amen. I know whom I've believed, and I'm persuaded that he's able, able to complete what, he is, what I have committed to him until that day. Praise the Lord. So don't think, when you're thinking about that, oh yeah, I got born again way back then, but that was then, it was fresh then, but I'm in this life now, I'm battling my way through. No, no, it's much more exciting than that. God is creating in you every day. It's, his mercies in you every morning. Hallelujah. His power is at work in you right now. Hallelujah. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. He's doing a creation work in you every day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so we are, we are his workmanship created in, in Christ Jesus for good works. And so because he is our creator and we are created in him and we are his people, then it is creativity should be a major part of our lives. Hallelujah. So I've got an example here this morning. And I'm going to ask uh, Joel and um, Alex has offered to help too. And this is to do with something that is part of the life of this church, believe it or not. This is some creativity, and Milton was the key figure involved in this one. <clears throat> we um, were blessed to be able to set up a business on our property and uh, I'll say right at the outset, this is not advertising, okay? Nothing's for sale this morning. <laughs> Don't accuse me of merchandising the anointing. That's not what this is about. We're talking about creativity. We were blessed. We, um, we took over a, a, a part of the business that we've got. We took over the serious incinerators from... Uh, uh, a company at Dargable that was closing down. And originally, these incinerators were made out of large pipe barrel of various different sizes. And um, they're all welded together with a, um, a welded on um, chimney on the top. And uh, we, we were so blessed because um, we had to had to pay for the business, but we got a lot of materials and stuff with it. And it's, it just shows the goodness of God that with, with the materials and everything we got when we purchased the business, uh, we were given enough to actually pay it off in a very short period of time. That's the way God works, eh? He just he blesses us above and beyond. So anyway, we... Um, made up the first few models and we was, was selling the advertising and selling these things. And you, you can start making noises, that's all right. <laughs> these guys are, are, are well experienced at putting these things together. They've done a lot of them now. But, but as I said, originally these things were sort of welded up so they're, they're, they're one big piece with the chimney on top all welded together. And we pretty quickly realised that there was a problem. And the amazing thing was that the people that were making them before us were doing it for many years. 
They'd, they'd sold a lot of them, but they had stuck with the original design. And when we went to transport them, the uh, transport company said, well, OK, um, there's a bit of a challenge here. It's, you know, the bulk of this thing. Um, it's, they're, they're difficult for, um, you know, some of our carriers, that, that, that not just where we drop them off and send them on, but who they get to, to that they'll get another carrier to sometimes to take them out to out-of-the-way places. And um, it, they haven't always got the room in their truck for this, this great big thing that's welded together. Well, Creative Milton got busy. <laughs> and after a couple of processes, he, he, he came down to this here. So as you can see, this unit here can be broken right down. We send quite a number of them down to the South Island. They can be flat packed right down small instead of having a great big bulky thing like that. And, and this is the smallest size incinerator we do. We do um, actually three main sizes, so the large ones, you know, quite a bit bigger. But uh, they can be brought right down to a flat pack. And again, I'm not advertising. Don't anyone accuse me. Nothing's for sale today. Okay, and I seriously mean it. I, I'll, I'll be offended if anyone... <laughs> but all we're doing this morning is just saying, here is an example of creativity. Here is something that's happening in this church that's creative. And uh, we've been blessed. You know, uh, I mean, I won't say we're rolling in the dosh, we're not. But, but God has, has, has provided that we can have a business that continues. And, and from this business, finance has, has, come in, um, has been made available to come into this church for the, uh, to help with the ministry in this church. Praise the Lord. Okay, so there you go. We've got it all together. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, yeah, originally um, there were bolts in here, stainless steel bolts to hold the, the joints together. Um, that was Milton's first go at it, which was a great idea. But then he thought, oh, I can make it simpler than that. I can make it so that people can easily knock these things together. And so we um, came up with the, this F pin idea creativity. Creativity. Praise the Lord. I know there's creative people in this house. I know that uh, others have... You, in fact, I know every person in this house is creative because if you're a believer, if you're not... A, is there anyone here who's not a believer this morning? Become a believer and get, get God's creativity into your life. Praise the Lord. I know... Uh, Sam, you're a creative man. With your outreach, you were using uh, Star Wars, weren't you, as a, as a means of outreach and, yeah, to share the gospel with people. Praise the Lord. And, and I really believe that um, this is something that, that is so important. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 says this, that wisdom is the principal thing, therefore Get wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12, the King James Version tells us that wisdom gives us knowledge of witty inventions. Webster's Bible translation of this verse, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12, says this, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of ingenious inventions. Do you know that some of the um, greatest inventions that have happened on planet Earth have come from, through Christian believers? In fact, it's notable, really, that uh, the nations of the world that have got a Christian heritage or Christian influence are far more inventive than those that are, um, have, 
been more sort of locked in pagan beliefs. You see um, life improving and life advancing far more in, in nations historically that have got a, a Christian or a word of God or a, or a Jewish background because our God is creative and his word brings creativity. His spirit breathes creative life. Hallelujah. There's a very inspiring uh, example of somebody who is very creative and uh, surprised many prejudiced people. Back in America, uh, back at the, um, the late 1800s and early um, 1900s, the beginning of last century, a, um, a dark-skinned man by the name of George Washington Carver, and I think um, he's been referred to before, and uh, some of you would have read about his, his story, about his life. But uh, sadly, at that time, there was a lot of prejudice, and um, I know it, it sadly still exists, uh, even in our days, uh, between races. But um, praise God, in Christianity, in, in the kingdom of God, there's no distinction between our colours, between our, our races, our, our ethnicity. We're all one people in Christ. Praise the Lord. It's the same coloured blood that flows underneath this, this skin, no matter what colour it is. Actually, did you know that every one of us actually have uh, the um, dark skin pigment in us? <laughs> it's just that some, have got, some of us have got more than others. In the winter, I'm quite pale. In the summer, I turn quite... <laughs> I had a, had a Maori brother one day say to me, I'm jealous of you in the summer. How do you do that? <clears throat> anyway, George Washington Carver was born a slave in 1864. He became one of America's greatest scientists. God has a way of um, shaming those who've got prejudices, hasn't he? He developed 325 different products from the peanut and 100 from the sweet potato. His product was used, his products were are used in cosmetics, medicine, paint, plastic, rubber, paper, and gasoline. He developed a practice of crop rotation that revolutionized farming. In 1921, he spoke to the US Senate about his discoveries and told the amazed senators that his discoveries came from God. Amen. Carver said, and I just, I just love this here, Carver said, I went into the laboratory and said, Dear Mr. Creator, please tell me what the universe was made for. The Creator answered, You want to know too much for that little mind of yours. <laughs> Ask for something more your size. Then I said, I asked, Dear Mr. Creator, tell me what man was made for. Again, the great creator replied, Little man, you are still asking too much. Cut down the extent of your request and improve the intent. So then I asked, Please, Mr. Creator, will you tell me why the peanut was made? <laughs> That's better, but that is, even that is infinite. Actually, that's just that's a loaded sentence, isn't it? And you think, it's not only the peanut that's infinite. What do you want to know about, what do you want to know about the peanut? Mr. Creator, can I make milk out of the peanut? What kind of milk do you want? Good Jersey milk or just plain boarding house milk? Good Jersey milk. And then the great creator taught me how to take the peanut apart and put it back together again. And out of that process has come forth all of these products. Carver said that the secret of his incredible inventive 
genius came from love. Doesn't that add up, eh? When I touch a flower, I'm not merely touching the flower. I'm touching infinity. <laughs> and we think, what more can be created? In fact, people have thought that in the past, everything that's been created can be created, that, that can be created, has been created. No, no. Our God's much bigger than that. What he's made is much bigger than that. He said, when I touch a flower, I'm not merely touching the flower, I am touching infinity. You have to love it enough. Anything will give up its secrets if you love it enough. I think there's a big lesson there too in how we relate to one another, isn't there? Mm. I think, so much of the time we miss out on so much because we don't understand the power of love. Creativity is a vital process. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always got. <laughs> Our great creator wants to demonstrate creativity through his people. If we're going to grow as individuals, if the church of Jesus Christ is going to advance, then creativity has to be right in the center of the equation. God is creativity. God in us equals creativity. I believe actually we're doing the Lord a great disservice, perhaps we're even insulting him if our minds are not open to creativity. He said, go, go forth and multiply, replenish the earth. The Great Commission is effectively saying the same thing too, isn't it? Go and make disciples of all nations. How are we going to do it? Creativity. Our God's creative. Well, I asked the Lord about this and what a vital ingredients for creativity. And I wrote down these points. Perhaps it's not an exhaustive list, but I think these are vital ingredients. Number one, to be a creative, intimacy with God is vitally important. It won't happen if we're disconnected. Well, it'll be stunted anyway greatly. I mean, the fact that we're human beings created by God must, has to mean that there's creativity in us in the first place. But intimacy with God will put the fuel in that creativity. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 5, not only in that verse, but he certainly said it here. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So intimacy with God. The more we walk with him, the more creative we have to be. Number two. In fact, these are not necessarily in order of importance, but... <clears throat> Adaptable, ad, ad, adaptability. To be adaptable. We can't be stuck in a rut. We need to be teachable. Jesus said in um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That word meek means to be humble, it means to be uh, willing to be led, to be yielded. It, it means being teachable, being adaptable. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 tells us that we are to be renewed in the spirit of our, our mind that we can prove what is that good and acceptable 
and perfect will of God. In um, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 35, there is a family who were taught by their father to be adaptable and uh, they carried on this heritage for uh, quite a number of years in, the, in their history and it protected them. There was a family called the Rechabites, Jeremiah chapter 35. And um, I'll just quickly turn there. And uh, the father, Rechab, uh, taught his, told his descendants certain things put uh, in, in there. He told them, um, for one thing, they were not to drink wine. Um, and they, where is it? Verse um, well, actually, I'll tell you why I'm, I'm re partly referring to this too. Is Jeremiah called the Rechabites together because the um, God's people, the, the um, people of Judah, were being rebellious and they weren't obeying what God was saying to, uh, to them and uh, they had a rebellious heart. But there was this family that had obeyed the instructions that their father had given them. And uh, it had caused blessing in their lives. And, um, and so uh, Jeremiah set them as an example to the rest of the nation. Um, he, he called these um, Rechabites apart and he, he set before the, son, uh, before the sons of the house of the Rechabites bowls full of wine and cups and said, drink wine. But they said, we will drink no wine for Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, um, commanded us saying you shall drink no wine nor uh, you nor your sons forever you shall not build a house sow seed, plant a vineyard nor have any of these but all your days you shall dwell in tents that you may live many days in the land where you are sojourners so these people had to be um, had, to, had to live an adaptable type of lifestyle now I'm not going to come out and say you shouldn't have a house here this morning that you're going to have to live in a tent and if you, to obey God that's not the point for this particular family this was important and, and God wants us to learn to be adaptable to, um, to be able to maybe sometimes do some things that mentally might not make sense or it, it may not uh, look good in the eyes of other people obviously it still has got to be upright you know, not wacky, weird stuff. But, but we've got to be flexible. And these, these people had a lifestyle of being flexible. And what actually happened, they're living in the tents and not sort of being settled and fixed in one spot protected them when the um, enemy invaders came down from the north. They were able to move quickly. And, uh, and that was their protection to whereas other people that were fixed in a certain spot were sitting ducks for the enemy to come and take them. <clears throat> okay, uh, so intimacy with God, being adaptable, um, being able to think outside of the square. Just think, I uh, just gave this example. The company before had the same old model for years and years and years, and it was limiting them. Creative Milton inspired by God, comes up with something that's much more adaptable. In fact, you can even send these things, you know, offshore if you want to. Well, Great Barrier Island anyway. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> South Island. Chatham, one, one went to the Chatham Islands. So, praise the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> My next point is faith is important, is vital. Um, Jesus said this in Mark chapter 9 verse 23 this is just one example I mean the Bible's full of faith we, we believe in faith 
Um, we're a faith church, that's right, eh? Amen. All Christians should be faith people. Amen. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now that was in a certain context to do with somebody's healing. He was saying that. But the principle still stands there. All things are possible to him who believes. Number four, our motivation must be a motivation of love. We're doing it. Our creativity is to express the love of God, to do good, to be a, be a blessing in people's lives. And we, we, love, we love God, we love his creation, we don't abuse his creation, and we love God's people. And we love the people that God has made too that aren't yet members of his family. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says that, um, you know, we can do all kinds of things. We can, we can come out with great prophecies and, and all kinds of stuff. But if we don't have love, if love is not our motivation, then it's all a waste of time. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith and so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Love goes on and on. Love will overcome anything. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, just as also I am known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Hallelujah. And my fifth point that I just uh, put down, which I felt was important for creativity, is we need boldness. We need to be willing to overcome criticism and opposition. John chapter 11, and there's a principle here, I believe. Jesus is standing at the tomb of Lazarus. The body is dead, is rotting, starting the, the decomposing process is starting to, to, to take effect. And um, John, uh, sorry, John chapter 11, and I'll take this up at um, verse 23. Jesus uh, said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, he shall live. And whoever believe, lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went away and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha had met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary arose quickly, went out and followed her. Um, actually, I'll jump down a bit. Verse 38, then Jesus came groaning in himself to the tomb. 
It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, did I, did I not say to you that you would, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, bound, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Praise the Lord. Jesus demonstrated his, bold, his faith and his boldness there. And a creative miracle happened. A rotting corpse bound. In fact, that must have been a spectacle to see. Because they say, that, and, and most of you will know this, that the actual place where he was laid was down some steps down low in the, um, in the cave. So he must have, he must have just, <laughs> bump, <laughs> come out to the entrance. But I believe there's a principle here that, you know, God is going to, in these days we're living in, and we're going to face some challenges with changing things that are happening on this earth. It's going to be demanded of us to be creative. Not just to survive, but to advance the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because it's our mandate to be partnered with him as he builds his church on this earth. If we're going to move forward, we've got to think outside of the box. We're going to have to do some things a different way to how we've done them before. We've got to learn to be adaptive. In fact, human progress, it, does not, it, doesn't, it, it's, 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 it doesn't take long to work it out that from where we are now in this century, coming from where we were centuries ago, there's been a lot of creativity that's happened in the process. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ should be on the leading edge. And God is demanding of us to be creative. And I'm not talking about smoke machines in church. <laughs> I believe that stuff's a counterfeit. In fact, I believe it stands in the way. We want the genuine. We want the genuine Holy Spirit being able to move without curtains being put in front of him. But there are other areas, the ways we reach out to people, and, of course, you know, there's, um, there's a um, things to do with the garden here that, that um, hopefully as time goes on will progress and, and, and come together a bit better. Um, there's, um, you know, outreach into the local school up here. But there's other areas where God wants us. He's, he's, he's going to stretch us if we're going to move forward. We're going to be stretched outside of the box I've often thought about it like this. You know, we don't like porridge for breakfast, just plain porridge every day, do we? I mean, I, okay. <laughs> well, I'll, well I'll, I'll admit I have porridge a lot of the time, but I add interesting things into it to make it a bit, yeah. I remember Dr. Edwin Lewis Cole saying um, that when he started out in ministry, he and his family, um, there was very little he was a pastor of a church, there was very little um, giving coming into the church. The congregation must have been fairly small. But there was one guy, and, and they were living on oatmeal porridge, basically. Uh, for every meal they had, there was, they, they couldn't afford anything else for the family. And uh, one member of the church, and uh, th this guy had a business, and he was, well, he was making some money. He said to him, um, Pastor, um, one day when I really start to, you know, 
do well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, give you a, some decent offerings and that. And uh, Dr. Cole said something like this. He said, well, you know, if you'd just give me a dollar now, it'd be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> God is creative. God has got creative ideas for every situation. No one's situation is hopeless. None of us are in a hopeless situation. I believe God will sometimes shock us out of our narrow-mindedness. Remember, with him, all things are possible. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I just believe it'd be um, good now. Could we just um, get together in groups of, just small groups, maybe four people, three or four people, five people, something like that. Just pray over one another now. Just bless one another. Declare that the people that you're praying with are creative. Maybe somebody needs a creative miracle in their life. Let's just do that for a few minutes as we close this. There's creativity in this room.